Well, here I am, <clears throat> end of December, down at the beaver pond. It was a mostly pleasant walk due to all the work that I've done on the path over at the shoe house end. But right around here, as you come down into this into this uh, basin, <laughs> it's just a disaster. <laughs> Downfalls. There must have been a really nasty straight line wind to pull, push these things down there. It can be a lot of work. Anyway, <clears throat> nothing really happens down here. I hear some crows or ravens in the distance, but otherwise, nothing much. Very quiet. Lots of deer track, of course. I think they enjoyed the path that I cleared last summer. Well, now to slog back up through the thicket. This used to be the way we accessed the beaver pond, but uh, I think we're going to have to reroute. I came up uh, this way and down through here and around and over to the lake. We used to walk right through this mess, but I think this is going to be an example of a dynamically changing path over time. The slope that descends to the beaver pond is covered with these beautiful big poplars. And some of them are still here, but a lot of them have just broken off and just littering the, the the hillside that we used to be able to just walk down blithely. And it's not just poplars that are uh, that are littering it. There's also balsams like this. I want to go right through here. The path is there, and I can't. I've got a I got a route around through here. So the path used to run right through here. This snag fell right on top of it, um, forcing a reroute up around through there. Still rerouting. There's the path there. Oh, it's left of it. I can go around, try to pick it up here. So well, here it is now, and then it's just obliterated down there. Once you've made it to the, to the top of the slope that leads you down to the beer pond, you, you uh, get up here and it's not too bad, although it's... um. Certainly not been lopped or anything. I only got about half the trail lopped this summer. Got an awful lot of deadfalls taken, but at least once you get up to here, it's a fairly straightforward walk, even though there's a lot of garbage. It needs to be taken care of. Even though the upper part near the beaver pond hasn't been locked or anything, there's some pretty nice parts of it, like right here, nice and flat, pretty passable. This is that part of the trail that doesn't have very much terrain, it's just flat, but the same old stuff, jack pine, birch. Poplar, spruce, balsam, 
everywhere. So on and on and on. There's a place where it's easy to get lost in the summer. You have to come in here and make a right turn, which is not immediately obvious. Of course, when you're retracing your steps in the winter, no problemo. So here begins this descent into what we call the Poplar Ridge, but not because there's any poplars really on this trail here. I mean, there are some, but as you can see, just, there's a ridge here and a ridge here on the other side, and descending into Balsam Valley, we call it. But on both sides of the valley are tons of poplar. Likely. Like way over there, and way up there. And of course, they're on this side too. So down we go into Balsam Valley. So named because of unlopped balsam everywhere, uh, requiring uh, careful stepping. Make sure you don't get your eyes poked out. Now here we are at the bottom of it, and it's very lush down here in the summer. And there's fabulous ferns here. I did clean out a lot of deadfalls here. I think I did some by hand when my chainsaw failed, but I don't recall this huge poplar here. This has got to be a recent one. It's just, it's just uh, monstrous. And of course it requires a step over here. It's very dark in here because of the canopy. Even when the sun, it's kind of spooky, especially now when there's when there's so so quiet and still. And I was pretty sure that I saw some pretty big uh, canine prints up here before. They're probably watching me. Okay, we're about to exit. So we just came out of Balsam Valley over there, and it happens to also be the uh, right on the border, the boundary line of our wonderful um, scientific and natural area that uh, we, uh, our shoe house property has is Kitty Corner adjacent to. There's the exit slash entrance to Balsam Valley. Now we're on the flats here and um, somewhere between here and Oaks's Knoll is where I finished lopping last year. Last summer, I'll find that. Last summer, Carrie and I took an afternoon and did some lopping and clearing and uh, got up through here. This is all nice. And we ended right there. Um, you can see that that badly needs lopping. You, if you walk through that now, you get a face full of snow. So what you do is you, you do a, uh, a walk around, which is what I've been doing from here on over to the beaver pond. But no, this is all nice, and it's probably, I'd say, over half the full distance. It could be close to two thirds, and it's very nice. Here we come out into the beautiful, the beautiful Oaks's Knoll. Not because there are any oak trees, but because of the remarks that Patty and Larry made the first time they got here. Something to the effect of wanting to. Uh, open up a bar here or something where we could sit and have some beer and wine but it is just starkly beautiful and uh, I'm really glad that Carrie and I got got it cleared all the way back to here 
these these were pretty hard to pass through before we cleared now I'm having to duck down a little here because of the snow and the laden branches and there's been a couple more windfalls but you can actually walk through here fairly nicely and uh, no real step overs so that was good work I remember this one <coughs> I just decided to uh, instead of plowing through this one which takes a long time especially with a 14 inch chainsaw decided to make the path polymorphic <laughs> which means it has many shapes and uh, easy to get through now it's a beautiful trail after the trail from Wilkes's Knoll we come into the so-called Warbler Woods named because Rose and Carrie were here right during the passing through of the warblers and they just heard warblers all around them here. So maybe in a few months can reproduce that. This is another place that was completely impassable until we cleared it out last summer. And there's the evidence. After descending Warbler Woods, from Warbler Woods to the lower ridge here, this was a big mess. It's got a, really got hit by those straight line winds. Several, look at all of them, several storms that occurred over the last two years. Just uh, knocking trees down like sticks. And this is where I got, I think, uh, early last summer before my other old 14 inch chainsaw failed right here. There's lots of other trees that are going to come down, you can see. <laughs> but we're not going to hasten, we're going to wait until they do. Until then, we have a path. Now we descend from that ridge, the lower ridge, down through this beautiful stand. Jack pine up here that seem, they seem to have largely survived those winds, but now we're descending straight down to Shoe House. I don't know how it's going to appear through this camera, but man, you know, it's approaching dusk. It's very, very quiet. And it's just gorgeous in here. I can't imagine there's enough light to really make these images do it justice, but man. Of course, this part of the trail received more attention last summer due to its proximity to Shoe House. So it's in great shape. There's another spot that was just laid waste by winds. Barely were able to get the trail back here. This this whole ridge. And then down here, just full of blown over trees. And this is would be Steve Cross's 80 acres. This is pretty much impassable in the spring, but it's good now. These little spruce were tiny when we first started maintaining this trail years ago. <laughs> and we didn't have the heart to take them out, so here we go through them 
flop them back like it was a little English uh, English garden labyrinth or something. <laughs> oh well. And then at long last the shoe house which was itself miraculously missed by a number of very large jack pine. I've probably documented this before but you can see them back there. Just I won't go back there again, but they're just laying all over the place back there. Well, it's getting dark. Let me head on down the driveway. And uh the driveway that we it needs a little work from Larry. Larry the road man. But signing off. <laughs>